Oh, you're coming in at the same time. Morning. Hey, hey guys, <laughs> and welcome to Petroped. What were you going to do, upstage me? I was, yeah, look, look. I've got Philippa Forrester on the channel. Hello, hello. Hey. hello, hello. <laughs> now then, <laughs> we are here in the new forest with yeah. a very noisy leaf blower mm. in the background. Not, that's okay. not electric. No, it's not that electric. One. But we're here, we're doing uh, some filming on a whole bunch of things today. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing a film for my channel. You're We've got a glorious day today. It's not to, raining. Uh, it's not raining. <laughs> to review some cars together. Exactly. And compare some cars together. Have a couple of arguments about the benefits of certain types of vehicles. We wouldn't possibly argue. Mm. I will. But it's amazing. So we are both Hendy brand ambassadors. Yes. We met at a Hendy... Um, <laughs> The, the big Hendy Awards dinner last we year. We might have been the only sober people there. Know, Are we allowed we're, to say that? Because it was driving. an evening of huge celebration. I know, and I've kind of, you know, <laughs> been seeing you on the telly since, you know, for ages. Yeah. Um, but we want to do a video today because Philippa is a massive EV fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm a bit partial to a plug-in hybrid. So I thought we would do a plug-in hybrid versus battery electric kind of robot wars without the radio control thing. Yeah, there's no remote controls here. No, I we'll be doing the driving. I hope you do realise yeah. that bit. <laughs> also, I am, you know, disclaimer, not a petrol head like you. I mean, you are, and I don't mean that in the sense that you love a combustion engine, but you are a car expert. Yes. I'm more of a environment and lifestyle and how can we make it fit our world expert. I like that. I guess. Should we get to it? That's how I'm approaching it. That's what she said. Let's find out exactly what that means when we get digging into the cars behind us. Now, one of the cars we've had borrowed from uh, Hendy, mm -hmm. which is yours. Kia Nero. EV. Mm -hmm. And I borrowed one from Kia UK, mm -hmm. a Sportage plug-in hybrid. However, they are about the same price. Yes. Uh, so we are as much as possible trying to compare like for like. Yes. Why have you got the Sportage though? Should we go and find out over there? Yeah. Okay, so let's explain exactly what we're doing. And I guess we need to start off by saying, well, why haven't we got two Kia Neros? Simple answer to that is we couldn't get hold of a plug-in hybrid Nero. They did do Nero in uh, hybrid, plug-in hybrid and battery electric, but they've stopped doing the plug-in hybrid now. Yeah. Um, so the only Kia we could get was the Sportage plug-in hybrid. And although they are different classes of car, they are actually a similar price, about 40, 41,000 pounds as tested. That one's quite a high spec one. It's the level four. Heated steering wheel, all the important things. Oh, see, all the nice <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me yeah. about the Nero. I did drive the Nero on the press drives about oh, what, 18 months ago, I guess, but. Well, it's a solid family car, you know, four and a half, five seats, but depending how big they all are. Yep. Um, and it's got some nice aerodynamics. It's, it's a nice looking car, you know, it's got the vents, all of those things. Fruit and a boot, Fruit which you're not going to have. Not a frunk and a trunk. Fruit and a boot. And about 285 miles, they claim, as the range. Yes. Obviously, in the real world, it's not going to be quite that. No. But, and also that varies on time of year. We're just coming into the winter, so you'll start to see a bit of a dip. Yeah. So you are here as the EV evangelist. You <laughs> love your EVs. You run a Mas do. Mustang Mackey as your Hendy Group long-termer. I ran one for nine months, absolutely loved it. But you do like an EV. I do, I love an EV because I've been on that journey now and come out the other side and I can't see myself ever going back. Um, you know, once you've done it, and now hopefully it's just getting easier and easier, you've got people like us around. There wasn't much in terms of information around when I started, when I came back from the States. Yeah. There's way more accessibility to public charges um, in terms of just having them contactless now. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to have an app necessarily to charge on a public charger. Things are changing so rapidly and so much for the better. Yeah. Uh, and especially range, you know, a small car, a smallish car like this has a 285 mile range. Well, even in the real world, that's not much reduced. No, and you, for your it's daily huge. journey, that, that's plenty. So you are a big EV fan, so we're gonna take this car for a spin, and while we're driving, you're gonna convert me. 
because I am a big <laughs> plug-in hybrid fan. Yeah, and what's the point? <laughs> We've got to discuss, I don't get the point of it. Like, let's, we're going so you've never EV, driven let's a plug -in just hybrid. do it now. Right, okay. What's so, the point? So I've got to persuade Philip for that. Plug-in hybrids are where it's at. So let's talk about the car that I brought along to the test, because I think, although it's a little bit more dirty than yours. Well, I've noticed. Yeah, I know. Could have made the effort. I know. Um, but I reckon, I reckon I'm here for the win. Come, let me tell you about the Sportage. So this, this is a Kia Sportage. And immediately I can tell it's less environmentally friendly. Do you know why? Because it's warm. No, because look at the amount of dead flies you've gathered on it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> None on mine. Well, yeah, well, you haven't driven so far. <laughs> Go on now, so, we, we will be serious about so this. This is a plug-in hybrid. The Sportage is Kia's best-selling car, by the way. They can't, literally can't make enough of these. Right. But the difference between that and this is this has an internal combustion engine and an electric drivetrain, and it can run as either a hybrid or a full battery electric car. Okay. And if it's running as a full battery electric car, Yes. Or EV, yes. as it's easier to say. Well, how many miles have you got there? I've got about 40 miles of pure EV running mm -hmm. and a combined petrol and electric range of just shy 300 miles. Does it make that choice for you or are you making those choices? I reckon we go for a drive and find out about that. Okay. Because it's, it's either. You can, you can control the car yourself. So you can put it in an auto mode and it makes all the decisions for itself or you can force it into running as a hybrid or force it into running as an electric car, depending on where you are in the, in the journey profile, if you okay. like. And the best way to talk about that is when we're out and about on the road. I though think, I, I love battery electric, but I think a, a hybrid or plug-in hybrid is the perfect gateway drug to battery electric. Because you're gonna argue, oh, it's the best of both worlds, aren't you? It, well, it's the best of both worlds or it's the biggest compromise ever because I've, I'm, when you're running as an EV, you're dragging an internal combustion engine along with you. And when you're running as, on an internal combustion engine, you're dragging an EV along with you. So actually it's a bit of a compromise, mm. but I think it's a compromise that works. And I'll leave you with this thought before we set off. Go on then. We only have one world. There aren't both worlds. Yeah. One world, that's all we got. Come on. Okay, I'll, t I'll leave you with this thought then. <laughs> Both of these cars. Oh, kill, you're a last word type, are you? Both of these cars kill polar bears. There's no such thing as a totally green car. It depends on how how much greener or less green they are exactly. to each other. Exactly. You know, personal transportation has an environment. Are we going to discuss this now or in the car? All right. Which one are we going to go in first? I don't mind. You choose. We'll, we'll go. We'll go in this one first. Okay. I'll, I'll persuade you. Jump in. <laughs> you persuade me. <laughs> You've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Most of my life. Yeah. Okay, just for you, yeah. I'm going to start off driving as an electric car. I hear that. And you have decided that, right? Or has the car decided that? So, th you've got three options here. You, you can, oh, this little drive selector here, uh, you can, I'm going to, you can have it in automatic mode. The mm -hmm. car will basically decide what it wants to do or you can force it into running as a hybrid so that will prioritize the petrol engine and then use the electric drivetrain in creeping traffic and that kind of thing right. or you can run it as a pure ev and that will force it into ev until the battery runs out and how many miles would you have can you show me 40 miles so i'm now if i just go that way oh, that other way that way 39 miles now 39 of pure miles. ev plus 200 miles of combustion engine running, so a combined 240 miles. And tell me then, do you have regenerative braking? Do you, <laughs> there is one hill when I come to the very end yeah. of a long journey near my house where I know I can make back two miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, so you can see the little um, Watch out display. for the donkeys. Donkeys, don't you love the new, new forest? forest. Um, they oh, don't care them. though, look. Slow down. You, you never get, get tired of them either. Um, so yeah, so uh, there's a little graphic that shows where the drive's coming from. So at the moment I'm coming from electric. If I back off, then you see the arrows will go back into the battery like that. So I, you, you do recuperate some oh, okay. kinetic energy, but what that doesn't translate to, like uh, a lot of EVs, like your Mustang, is the one pedal driving where you lift off the throttle and the car slows down. Oh, you don't have you that You don't bit. really get that. I've not really driven a hybrid where 
um, it, it's so noticeable you think, oh wow, the car's slowing down. So if I just lift off, even in electric mode, it slows down a bit, I'm, my foot's off the throttle, but it doesn't, doesn't stop the car. Um, yeah, I can feel, yeah, I can it, feel, yeah, so I can feel the slow is probably more than it would be in a petrol car. Though. Yes, yeah. yeah. If you're in hybrid running, so if we now turn it into running as a hybrid, so now the engine's fired up, mm -hmm. now it's just coasting. There's no, there's no slowing down okay. at all. So, so you do get a bit of that. For me, th there's a couple of things. The, some people will look at this and go, that's just a faff. You've got to work out when you want the car to do what you want the car to do. Well, that's fine. If you just push this until it says auto, the car will organize itself and do whatever it wants. The downside of doing that is it will prioritize electric drive and you will run that 40 miles of range down eventually that battery will disappear and you won't have any electric running at all. So when this car was delivered to me yesterday by Kia, the delivery driver had run it like that and it had no battery at all. Okay. And then you are driving a petrol car and you're carrying around an electric motor and a battery pack and they tend not to be that efficient. Well then talk to me, how long did it take to charge it back up? Because presumably, I mean, it's obviously a smaller battery. It's, it's a tiny battery. Um, now this car uh, and most plug-in hybrids only do AC charging. So seven kilowatt or maybe granny plug. The gran well, no, granny plug is the three pin one. A wall box, ah, you got at home. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, so not right. But on I'm one of you. those, hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Um, on a granny plug, three pin charger, yeah. maybe four hours. So the nice thing, if you have got a plug-in hybrid and you don't have a wall box at home, you could still live with a plug-in hybrid with just a three pin granny charger. You couldn't say that about an electric car. I don't think you could live with an electric car, you know, on some of the bigger batteries it's going to take you 30, 35 hours to, to charge the car up. A plug-in hybrid, you can get away with it just about. Yeah, and that's huge, um, particularly when you're travelling around. Yes. And I'm guessing that's the main advantage of these cars, is longer journeys. Yes. Now, where if when you start to learn how to play with one of these, so the reason I love plug-in hybrids is they are the best of both worlds. Short journeys, you're running as an EV, and you may never actually fire up the electric, uh, the, the petrol engine at all. When we ran, we've run two plug-in hybrids now. I think we went four weeks without putting any fuel in it at all because we're just running locally, nice. which is really cool. But then, when you want to go on a longer journey, you just put some petrol in it and off you go. Now, with this one, if I were to force it into hybrid running like it is now. Yeah. It now, it will use the, I mean, it's using the electric motor now, but it will maintain that 40 miles of range. So even if we did the full 200 miles of petrol running, I'd get to the other end and I'd still have that full battery pack and then I'd be able to run as an EV when I got there. So you can kind of hold on to the electric until you really need it. Yeah, you, you can manage your option. Yeah. Now there is, there's a crazy quote for the efficiency of this car yes. in terms of mileage. Yes. Um, what was it 200 and it's, it? it's 200? high 200 miles per gallon yeah 280 something yeah okay miles per gallon. <laughs> how is that even possible you've only got 40 miles on your full battery why suddenly does the efficiency <laughs> of the fuel consumption go haywire okay in a good way so, but is it true okay so if we were running on ev only i would be doing infinite miles to the gallon because i'm not using any petrol at all <laughs> yes, <Right>? yes. <laughs> I am using energy, I'm using yeah, electrons, right. but I'm not using so any You can't do infinite petrol. miles. No, you can't. So, um, per unit. I know, I love um, So, yeah. if, um, so I, I've done 70 miles today and I'm averaging 37 and a half miles per hour. Okay. Oh, well, that's so, far cry from is, 280, though. It is, but what happens is the, the, the manufacturers use a standardized. Um, test procedure called WLTP that runs on a number of different drive cycles and that calculates how much how much miles per gallon and that number whenever you see a quoted number for a, a plug-in hybrid ignore it it's a bit like range on an electric car ignore it well no not ignore it it no, won't be it won't be, be that number it won't yeah. be that number so a plug-in hybrid you're still going to get much better fuel economy you're going to be getting 40, 50, 60 miles per gallon. But so I'll give you an example. If we were just doing mainly city running, going to the school run, going to the shops, where you're using the electric motor a lot, 
your MPG is going to be really high. You could be getting 80, 90, 100 MPG in this car. As soon as you have to go on a longer journey and you start using the petrol engine some more, yeah. like I did driving down here on the motorway, then that fuel economy is going to come down a lot. Um, and if you run out of battery altogether, then the fuel economy is going to be really poor. Yes, but and of course, you know, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's that range anxiety that people have that is so well associated with EVs. Yeah. That in one way, culturally, I think it's going to be hard to shift. That's probably, would you say, in talking to all the people that you have, from my experience, that's probably the biggest barrier. It is the biggest barrier. It's range anxiety and charge anxiety. It's, it's knowing that I'm going to run out of electricity, I need to charge, am I going to find a charger that's free, that's working, that's part of the network I belong to? That's the problem, and, and it is getting so much better. Um, but the thing with a plug-in hybrid, you kind of don't have to worry about that. The downside is it is a compromised vehicle because you're, you're, it's the best of both worlds. It's neither a great EV nor a great petrol engine car, but it's a great gateway drug into the world of EV running, especially for people who live in an urban environment where they've got lots of short runs, because most of the time you're running as an EV. And there are EVs you can buy now. Um, I was went to the launch of the new Tiguan, VW Tiguan, and that does 60 miles pure EV running, and it does rapid charging, DC charging. So they are they are starting to get better and better and better. Right. The, the last thing about plugins that uh, and hybrids that are really good for people if if you don't have dedicated charging at home or you can't because you live in an apartment or something, these are a great way to deal with that because you don't have to worry about charging up every night. You can. The the, the hint is in the name, plug in hybrid. Mm -hmm. Plug them in, and they work better. Don't plug them in, and they there there's no point having them. Mm -hmm. Let's go for a drive in your EV, and you can tell me. being driven I quite like being driven I like oh, being driven do? by okay. you this is this is very nice you could be my my chauffeur well we're only in the new forest it's not gonna get there's not gonna be any amazing driving going on I know um, but tell me why you like Bevs and I love it I love I mean I just call them EVs and yeah. I love them because just that cleanness and that quiet clean efficiency lack of um, emissions I feel very comfortable. I know there are lots of issues surrounding them, but I feel very comfortable with those issues. Yep. So um, the long life of an EV and its battery now that we know is very reassuring to me, mm -hmm. that battery technology is moving so swiftly that we, you know, we, we're coming to a point, Tesla, for example, are not using cobalt in some of their batteries now. We're coming to a point where cobalt mining isn't even a thing as far as EV goes. I mean, cobalt mining is an issue, full stop, um, and that needs to be addressed, but it's a bigger picture than me driving my EV. Yeah. Um, donkey! Look at him! <laughs> he just stands like, in there having a dose in the middle. I'm just gonna stand in the middle of the road. Oh, you're so gorgeous. And your friend So would too. you though, so one of the things I quite like about plug-in hybrids is there isn't a massive change in mindset needed. You get the benefits of an EV without having to change your mindset. And don't get me wrong, I'm a I'm a big EV fan, and I do like driving them, and I, I like running them. But you do need to approach things in a slightly different way. You need to be a bit more organised, don't you? You do need to be more organised, but actually that falls into place fairly quickly. And I used to get stressed. You know, there's a shift that has to happen. I did used to get stressed. I did used to get a bit of range anxiety. Um, and I pushed it really hard sometimes. There have been times where I've turned the heating down to yeah. conserve my miles because I'd rather do that than stop. And I think I think some EVs are way more prone to that problem than others. If you've got a smaller range, you're going to struggle. But that's where you have to buy the right car for you. Yes. You have to be. Um, you have to really think through what do you use your car for. My, I, I'm a single parent with one car. This yep. is it for me. This yep. does everything. You know, yep. it does my long journeys, my emergency journeys. Um, I very often keep charged up yep. to avoid that thing of, uh, what if my mum's had a fall and I have to drive down quickly? Yep. And you know, very often I'll just be sure that I've got my miles charged up. 
Um, and you do have to think about it. And you do, you know, but but on the Mackey, for example, which I know is a super privileged position to be in driving a car like that. But I have around about 250, you know, 230, 250, depending on the temperature, depending on lots of things. My efficiency, how I'm driving, how heavy where is your I'm right driving. Foot? Yeah. Um, and, you know, am I driving on the motorway or not? Sometimes, I'll, again, I'll choose a cross-country route to save my miles so I don't have to charge on the way home or yeah. something. So you have to think about it. But equally, if I'm going for a long, long drive, you know what? When I'm running out of miles, it's about time I stopped anyway. Very true. And had a coffee and, you know, went to the bathroom and did those things. And usually, I can make the most of that time. Frankly, if I don't need a wee, the dog does. Yeah. By that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it is true people go oh, you know I want 300 miles of range or 400 miles of range well you know you, you do need that and I think the I think as soon as the those rapid charges are at things like motorway service stations or places where you can go and stop and have a, a meal or a coffee or whatever grid serve the grid serve places are fantastic yeah uh, the, I think you've been to the, the one in Braintree the one in yeah. in Norfolk phenomenal places and fast fast charging yeah. you get a lot of miles in your car quite quickly and I've learned to be proactive. I used to be of the mindset, which is the petrol driver mindset of, when I run out, I fill up. Yeah. I'm not like that anymore. I'm like, I'm thinking ahead, and I'm thinking, actually I really want to stop for a coffee right yeah. now, or I need to stop and make a couple of phone calls, or hop on a Zoom or something. While I'm doing that, I'm yeah. gonna charge. You're gonna bolt and bolt, or then, bolt and bolt rather. Yeah, then later I won't need to charge. Yeah. So I'm much better at being proactive with my charging, being one step ahead. And that comes with just, it's it's second nature to me now. Yeah. And I think the, the bit that, until you run an EV, the bit that people forget, I'm gonna turn right here, mm -hmm. the bit that people forget, they, they draw comparisons with, with petrol and diesel cars in that, oh, there's not enough petrol stations. Well, the last time I checked, most petrol and diesel car owners don't wake up in the morning, every morning, with a full tank of diesel because no. they've, they've filled up overnight. And you do that with an electric car. And that means when I ran my, my Mustang Mach-E, in nine months, I didn't plug it into public charging once. You did not once. Because we never did a journey outside of the range profile of the car. Okay. And if we did, we went to a friend's house and we charged up, they've got an electric car, we charged up at their house and, right. or we went to a destination charger at a hotel and charged up and came back. We never actually had to plug into charging on the go. So I think if, if you get into that mindset, um, I, 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 I am, I do, I, I don't want you to think I'm a, a complete Neanderthal and don't love my EVs. <laughs> I, I do love EVs. I, I, the reason I like Febs is I think it takes away some of the things that are challenging for people, the planning, the organizing, you know, whenever I get an EV press car, you know, I, and I think oh, I'm going to drive it to Wales or Scotland or whatever it might be, you know, you get out on ZapMap or you start looking at what your journey is going to be and you do some planning and you simply don't have to do that with a petrol car. You just get in the car, plug it into sat nav, and off you go. But equally, I was a great one for, oh God, I haven't got time to fill up now because I need to get the kids mm. from school and then I need to get to the shops to grab that and then I need to do that and I come I'm just and I would always be pushing my petrol car to the limit anyway mm. and getting a bit I'd get a bit of range anxiety in that to be honest because I didn't want the inconvenience and oh boy I don't miss that you know yeah. of just keeping having to stop and fill up plus the performance is extraordinary in an oh, EV yeah uh, yeah even you even a, a a kind of well, the car we're sat in it's still faster to 60 than a hot hatch from 20 years ago yeah and you go in a performance ev kia ev6 gt or porsche taycan or something like that phenomenal they really are and just so simple and easy uh, and you're i you're kind uh, of persuading me, me yeah for you're me, kind of persuading me the inconvenience of having to plan a charge on a long journey is far outweighed by all of the other stuff you yeah. know and and primarily that lifetime of the EV and its battery. You know, now batteries are sometimes outliving the car and then being recycled. And over over its lifetime, you know, an EV is three times um, more sustainable in terms of climate friendly um, and, and less carbon produced than an ICE vehicle. So for me, it's a no brainer. We're all gonna have to do it at some point. Let's just do it as quickly as we can. 
I'll, 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 you're, you're, you're persuading me. Okay, but to be also with my journalistic head on, there is a, there is a massive con, and that at the moment is price. Oh, that way. And, and that's prohibitive to most people who yeah. want to explore this new terrain. Yeah, and I think the second-hand values are coming down, but it is a, it is a big challenge for mass adoption for sure. Yeah, absolutely for sure. Well, I reckon that's a good way to finish this video. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yeah, put wait. in the comments below what you think. <laughs> yes, yes. I reckon Philip has get. She, I didn't need to persuade me massively because I do like my EVs, but you are clearly a passionate advocate of an EV. And that's because I've done it now for yeah. ages. Yeah. You know, and because I really do care passionately about what we're doing to the natural world. Now I'm going to put Philip's details below. Make sure you follow her on social media. And I'm going to keep my eyes on the road. And you keep your eyes on the road. But guys, if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobed for plenty more content to come. And subscribe to this legend as well. And I'll see you on the next video. Legend. Legend. <laughs> you take care, guys. Drive safe.